hello beautiful creatives if you watched last week's video you know that i sorted all of my sketchbooks out into piles and i have them as you know which ones are completely filled which ones are completely empty and which ones are in process and i had mentioned that i wanted to take this little guy and do some paintings daily paintings in here so that's what this video is about this week so the first few paintings i did in this little book were um with my m Graham gouache palette which i'm still trying to empty out it's almost empty at this point i was doing these daily doing a little one each day i'm sorry the sun is so bright out that it's really bright on my table but i don't want to close the blind because i'm enjoying the sun so much Anyway, so that's the first one with the M. Graham gouache. This is the second one with the M. Graham gouache. And this is the third one with the M. Graham gouache. And then I switched over to the Blick acrylics and I did a few paintings with the Blick acrylics and they were so much fun to work with. That is also the Blick Acrylics. So much fun to work with. I really enjoyed working with the Blick Acrylics. This is one that I did in my art nest with, um, oh, I didn't write it down, but with Tombow markers. Um, let's see, luminance colored pencils. And did I use anything else? I'm not sure. It might've just been Tombow markers and luminance colored pencils in my art nest. And this one was the Blick Matte Acrylics again. And this one, I, I video the process. In this video, you'll see me paint that one. And this one I paint for you. And you will see me paint that one in this video. So that was really fun. And I really enjoyed working with the Blick Acrylics. Um, oh yeah, this was one more I did. Uh, I did not paint this one on this video though. I think I did this afterwards. I actually didn't date this one either, but yeah. So I've really enjoyed working with the Blick Acrylic. I do end up sharing with you later in the video that the smell started to bother me with these paints. And I just want to say, add this note in here that I am extremely sensitive to scents. It's part of my illness um, that I struggle with. And, um, yeah, so I'm much more sensitive to the average person. So I don't want what I said at the end of this video to dissuade you from trying out these, um, Blick acrylics. Also, what I hope I remember to mention in this video is that my Blick acrylics are very old. I've had them for many, many, many years. I mean, they, some of them may even be 20 years old. So it could be that they have gone off and... That is why they smell. Um, yeah, so I would, if, you, if you're interested in, you know, these paints after watching me do a couple of paintings with them, I do highly recommend them. I think they're a great paint to work with. They have um, a matte finish. They're not shiny. I just really love them. So I would say if you are sensitive to smell, buy one or two bottles and see how you do with the smell. And if the odor doesn't bother you, then I, these are fabulous. These are so much fun to work with. I really enjoy the flat finish and I think you would enjoy them. This painting was done with golden and I used gesso and matte medium to try to tone down the shine. And as you can see, it's still shiny. Where I have a video coming up where I try different mediums with the golden fluid acrylics to dull that shine. So that is something to look forward to in the future. I even do a little chart for you that shows you what the paints look like. But that, that's a video for the future that's coming up because I still am waiting on one medium that I want to try to arrive. But that very, very vibrant paints. I'm, I'm looking forward to sharing my experience um, about those with you. But Back to the Blick, give them a try, you know? They're flat, they're fun to work with. The sketchbook pages don't stick together when you use them. And um, yeah, I would not be afraid to give them a try, but if you are sensitive to smells, just buy one or two bottles and see how you do with it. Hello, Nico, how are you? Did you come to say hi to my YouTube viewers? 
Did you and your brother come to say hi? Hello. Hello. It's still snowing outside. It's looking so pretty out there, out my window. Yep, that's gorgeous. I'm gonna miss that view of the stone wall when we, when we leave this house. Okay, so there's what my palette looks like at this point. These are the colors I used. I did manage to get a second painting done. So this one I did really, really quick. This one I spent a little more time on. But these are fun. These are really great, fun warm-ups to do. All right, I had to come back and lighten that shadow. I couldn't stand how dark it was. Anyways, another really quick little study. Looking at skies and clouds. So I'm just getting set up to fool around with these Blick acrylics again and just getting out some miscellaneous supplies. I actually probably won't use these because this little uh, sketchbook that I'm trying to fill up is so small, I'm not really sure how I'm gonna find room to do, um, to use tools. That I actually did in my um, art nest last night, just Tombow markers and colored pencils. But I've been working on cloud studies the last couple of days, just really loose, really quick studies to get me up here and get me going. Dawn and I have been having kind of a rough time with some grief and processing what's going on with our home and our future. And I have, um, yeah, I, I just have a lot going on. So I'm gonna set up and the plan is to do a really, really quick little landscape study and uh, see where it goes. I'm, I'm hoping it, it ends up being something productive because I would like something productive to come out of this day. <laughs> Anyways, we'll see what happens. I did contact Blick Art Materials the other day about these little bottles, and um, they said that they have not changed the bottle. Somebody commented that they thought that they were in softer, squeezier bottles now, but um, the Blick uh, rep that I talked to said they're actually not. She said that they are going to make a re uh, recommendation to the manufacturer I guess they, it's a complaint that they do hear frequently enough that they're going to recommend it, but that would probably take a while to actually come to market. So unfortunately, these are hard as a rock and you have to figure out a different way if you're, if you're wanting to squeeze them. I bought these little containers a couple of years ago and I, I was using them for various things, but these are hard plastic, which makes it a little hard to clean acrylics out of. And the tops, as you can see, are really hard to get off. My gosh, these, they are really hard. So I wasn't crazy about these. So they kind of have sat in here for the last couple of years. I haven't used them much. I have used them for gesso. So I ordered some small, soft containers from Amazon and they should actually be in this afternoon, but I also ordered some soft squeezy bottles. So we'll see how that goes because what I might do is I might take the, the Blick acrylics, add some open medium, which is what I've been painting with when I do these little landscapes. I've been adding a little bit of the golden open medium and occasionally a little of my gesso mix. This is a mix of Liquitex and Golden Gesso. So I might do that, scoop some of those out into the squeezy bottles, loosen them up a little bit with the open medium, maybe some gesso and maybe some water so that they'll squeeze out of the squeezy bottle. We'll see. I got a couple of different choices coming to try to make these easier to cope with. For now, I have a palette knife and I might end up scooping the paint out. We'll see. So I have the camera at a really tricky angle because I was trying to show the palette. Um, and these aren't single pigment colors, so I, I don't know how much color mixing I'm gonna do. 
that actually has been a little tricky for me is that these aren't single pigments so it's a little a little confusing when you go to try to make color mixes if you're used to working with a fairly limited palette so i have a lot of colors out because i don't know what i'm going to use but i hope that you can see this and maybe i'll even change the uh camera position part of the way through to um get a better angle but we'll see Let's see if I make this come down there, maybe a little, maybe like a little hill bump up here. I kind of didn't decide how I want my clouds before I started. So this the pencil that I'm using is a Graft Gear 1000 0.7 HB lead. In case you're interested. I'm going to start by just putting some darks in. I don't know if this is going to come out. find it kind of hard to paint with premixed colors because I just don't know what I'm dealing with. So we'll see what happens. I may end up changing colors a lot. Okay, so greens. So this is way more paint than I need. It's just coming out that way. may have to do a couple of paintings.
these little tiny paintings, you know, it's tricky not to overdo. kind of want this foreground to be have like a dappled feel like it's a little bit in shadow and a little bit um, more dappled what I may do is because I can't really see what I'm filming because I'm doing it with my camera so maybe what I'll do is change camera position and do another painting and um, use this paint up in that way like a muddy let's see so kind of a muddy but lighter color so what I'm doing is I'm taking a little bit of the open golden open medium and a little bit of gouache and mixing it in with my paint so they'll stay wet longer I'm gonna just take a little bit of this purple now let's see um, I'm thinking maybe some upward strokes of this duller color. I actually don't like that. I want this foreground to be quite dark. And I can tell you, actually, quite honestly, I am way overthinking this because I'm filming. I normally do these paintings quite quickly. Okay, I'm getting fiddly. Need to get out of here. Get out of this spot. All right, and now this back, I want to be much lighter. Um, so, the uh, gesso takes the shine off the paint. That's actually a trick I learned. Now, I have mixed gesso into paint before for other reasons, but it's a trick I learned from Oh, gosh, am I going to forget her name? Somebody I'm following. I think I already might have mentioned her name in one of the clips I filmed for this. I think it's Carolina Della Valle. Um, I'll put her link below because I'm going to have to look it up. But she um, subscribed to her Instagram. She has a subscription program on Instagram. And I um, she mixes the gesso in to take the shine away from the acrylics, which is such a great idea. I can't believe I never thought of that before. Also, she t she mixes it in so that her sketchbook pages don't stick together. She does not mix in the open medium. I just kind of decided to do that because I like it. It helps me to keep my... Um, my paints wet longer until I need this much lighter. I may actually have to grab some white. The uh, gesso isn't lightening this enough. And some blue, I think. Um, not really that familiar with these blues. I think 
I want this line to go back more like that, like at an angle. So it's, I used a lot of the golden open medium and this is staying wet a lot longer than um, it's funny I can't talk and paint at the same time a lot longer than it normally does so it's feeling a little bit more like oils. can see this I'm not sure about the, oh there's like a giant reflection uh oh oh boy I'm gonna have to change the camera position I think sorry guys I didn't realize that reflection was happening Okay, um, I am futzing with this way, way, way more than I intended to. I have been being really rough with these brushes that I got in that last art haul video, and they're really holding up well. This one started to have some hairs that splayed off, so I coated it with the Masterson um, brush cleaner last night and kind of left it. I feel like I wish I had some red out. Where is this? That's the other thing about these. As the bottles age, the plastic must yellow because it changes the color. Oh, yeah. See, like, I was thinking this was a muted orangey red. It's like a bright pink. So that's a little challenging for me. Yeah, I, I don't think I would buy these paints again. I like them, but I'm a big, you know, my during my silk painting career, I mixed all my own dyes from primaries cyan magenta and yellow um and that's just how i learned art i learned by mixing my own colors so um it's hard for me to use pre-mixed paints and kind of understand where i'm going and sort of get a a united color i don't know It can get frustrating if I can't get my color mixes right. Isn't that funny? I really would have liked that color, but that's not the color it is. Still trying to work out my camera angle, guys. I hope that's, I hope it's working out. Now, just a little. In here, maybe. And then I wanted that to be in a pretty heavy shade. Could be coming out of here, though. And then possibly maybe back there a little bit. Just a little, not much. A hint of it. I actually would have liked it a little more muted than that. Let's see how it dries. Thinking right here where this little hill kind of goes down. And we'll do something like that and then maybe a little yellow. 
to go with it. I'm like way overthinking this compared to the way I have been doing these. It's just going to take me time to get used to filming my painting process because I'm so used to having my expressive painting process be all my own and not having to share it on film. And I think if I do it more often, it will... I'll get more used to it and not be so fiddly. Let's see, I don't know how light I want to go there. I just feel like I should go higher with this. I wish that glare wasn't there. Turn my light down over there a little bit. See if that helps. Yeah, just be patient with me trying to figure out different camera angles too. I just feel like the overhead camera angle gets really boring really fast. So I'd like to experiment with doing some different, some different angles if possible. Hmm. Is this gray enough? Oh, look at that. That's kind of a crazy separation. Probably should have shaken it up. What color is this? It says, yeah, I gotta stop going by what it looks like on the um, bottle. That would be another thing nice about putting them in little containers. Uh, the little soft containers because, oh, oh yeah, these colors are just so wrong the way they're looking in the bottles at this point. I gotta let that dry a little bit before I can mess with it more. I actually think I'm gonna put some pink in here. Gray up the bottom of this cloud with some pink. And maybe. Uh, 
and maybe some yellow. You know, it's funny, I can't seem to stop myself. I know I should be letting that layer underneath dry, but I'm just kind of having too much fun here. Let's see, that's supposed to be a different area. Okay. Okay, now I'll try to get some white in there. Move my brush around different ways. And remember, just because I dislike a product or because I like a product doesn't mean that you have to feel the same way that I do. Some people um, leave comments in my videos that they get very upset because I say that I don't like a product and it's something that they love and they kind of lecture me. We don't have to like the same things. It's totally fine. As artists, we all have different ways of working and we all have different products that we love and products that we dislike and that's okay. Okay, so there's the finished painting. It flattens out once it's dry because of that gouache in there. And this is the um, Golden Open has two mediums. They have the matte medium and the gloss medium. This is the matte medium. So there is that painting. My palette looks like after the painting sesh. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to try to do another one real quick without so much thought. I wish I could mix the colors a little more to the way I want them, but maybe I'll even just try to mix them on the paper.
Okay, so there's the second one. And you can see what I mean about being really quick, really gestural, and not as much thought as the first one, which I just sort of kept poking at because I was self-conscious about videoing it. But this is what my intention is, is just to have really loose brush marks, fresh brush marks without a lot of monkeying around. There's still a lot of color variation in each section. Throughout the painting, there's colors are repeated, but it's not as fussy. And this is much more fun, you know, when I'm not as concerned about having the results be quote unquote good. This is a lot more fun. This is the one that I did before. A lot of fiddling and fussing with it. Okay, so that is today's painting session. And I'll give you one more look at my palette. That's the palette after the two paintings. With the golden medium, open medium, that I was mixing in, getting some nice neutral colors by kind of smearing everything together on my palette. So there's the second one, which I really like. I can see a couple of things I might have touched up, but I'm just going to leave it. There's the first one. Okay. So there's a couple of paintings for you guys. This okay, week. I said I was going to leave it alone, but I want to narrow that blue streak there. Just touch that a little bit. All right. There's that one. Blick Matte Acrylic. So I've been up here working on these Blick paints to swatch the tops because the tubes are so miscolored it's hard to tell what's inside so I put little swatches on the tops and on the bottoms I mean on the sides on the white label but the power keeps going out we're having a major storm and the last couple of days the power just keeps going out so I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to video for you because it's kind of dark in here. But I thought I'd show you that, that I did that to sort of be able to better tell. Because when I was painting with these the last couple of days, it was getting challenging. I was putting out paint colors that I thought were one thing. And then they ended up being another. The other thing that I really wanted to be sure to get in on this video is that sometimes when I'm painting, I'm so focused, I don't notice things. And then Don will walk into the studio and notice things. He walked into the studio when I was painting these tops and he noticed a really strong odor. And he said, you know, Han, I'm surprised you're even able to use those. He said, there is a really strong odor. So if you are, if you have environmental illness, mold illness, any other chronic illness that makes you sensitive to smells, these may give you a problem. Um, I have had a headache for the last couple of days and I haven't known what the source was. We're on a special diet for mast cell activation syndrome. Um, it's a low histamine, low lectin, low oxalate diet. And I thought maybe I ate something that I shouldn't have eaten and I couldn't think of anything I ate. And now after Don walked into the studio today, I actually can smell this very strongly and do feel like my sinuses are burning, which is sort of where the base of my headache is. So just to let you guys know, if you are chemically sensitive and you're really interested in buying these paints, just buy one or two at first and give them a whiff and see, see if you tolerate them. You know, everybody has different levels of sensitivity, but that's what I got done this morning in the dark with all the snow. Let me show you the, the front. He's got the window open for me so that the smell will air out. But 
probably easier to look out this window right now. That is what it looks like out there. Lots and lots of snow. It's really pretty. The van, you can kind of see how buried the van is over there. There's a lot of snow. Anyways, I'm gonna go back to it in my dark studio and see what I can get done. I hope everybody's safe and warm during the storm. We're getting a lot of snow. Power was out yesterday for a while and it's uh, out today. And it's supposed to keep snowing until seven o'clock tonight. We have the generator running. You might hear that in the background. Don's out on his ATV plowing. Wow, a lot of snow. Okay guys, I really hope you enjoyed this week's video. I hope you enjoyed watching me do the paintings and seeing a little bit of my process when I paint fast and loose. And um, I, you know, if you enjoyed it, let me know. I'll, I'll try to add more of those sort of intuitive, quick painting sessions into my videos. Also, if you did enjoy the video, I hope that you will give it a thumbs up and that you will subscribe. It really does help support my channel so that I can make more videos for you guys. And, oh, it's the end. What are we going to use for our um, secret word in the comments this week? Ha, stinky paints. <laughs> yeah, okay, stinky paints. So if um, you guys have watched to this point in the video, you are my true, super loyal viewers uh, to have watched to the end. Type stinky paints in the comments below the video so that I know that you made it to the end. Okay, guys, thank you so much for supporting my channel. God bless and have a great creative week. And I will see you next week.